Hi guys, Jim with Technosonic. Thank you for joining us for this, our second episode of Radio 101. I'm glad you're here because we're going to start some important work today in learning how to program our TDFM 9000s. Part of what we have to understand when programming is what the radio is going to ask us. Now, the radios that we're used to as aviators are basically the same radios that were invented back in 1894. It's a walkie-talkie style radio. Tune and talk. Very simple. But in 2021 in Land Mobile Radio, there's a lot more to consider. Land Mobile Radio and P25 standards have changed the face of radios. Today, it's not just what's the frequency. It's also, is there PL tones? Is there a DPL tone? Is, what's the mode? Is there a NAT code involved? Those kind of questions are going to get asked to us on every single channel. So we have to understand what the radio is asking us so that we can best set it up and so that we can troubleshoot and understand the symbology that's given to us when we're operating it. So what we're going to start today and for the next few episodes is we're going to do the hard work of understanding what the radio is asking us. This is going to allow us to do a much better job in setting up our code plugs. Everything from programming the frequencies to developing our zones to the ergonomics that we see on the radio, to what our soft switches and what our switches do for us in the programmable side of things. This is gonna go a long, long way. So bear with us, stick with the program. And after a couple more episodes, we're gonna be through the hard work and we can start looking at the real stuff you wanna know about, which is how to set up the code plug and how to make this radio operate for yourself or for your operators. So thank you so much. We're gonna start now with Radio 101 and P25. So P25 is part of our LAN mobile network system. Now LAN mobile rep network is exactly what we mean. The radios are meant to be operated from the ground, so it's gonna change things when we're in the aircraft. We're gonna have a few more considerations and we'll learn about those as we go. But let's talk about P25 and what that is because we've all heard the term, but some of us might not understand exactly what we're talking about. So P25 is this. P25 is an interoperability standard. And where it came from is a problem that was, we're seeing in the 90s and early 2000s. And that was, is radio systems have proprietary signaling in them. If you bought a Motorola radio, it could not talk to a Harris radio. That Harris radio could not talk to a Tate radio. The Tate radio couldn't talk to an EF Johnson and around and around we go. So that was starting to cause some serious problems. And an example here, I'm gonna use a three alarm fire. Now the first truck to show up here is Motorola Bill. And the truck and all of the firefighters are on Motorola radios and they can talk to each other and coordinate against the fire. But now the fire's gotten too big and Harrisburg shows up. They come in from another area, they're on a separate radio system. Even though they have the same frequency set into the radio, the Harris radio would not break squelch on the Motorola radio. So we started to have a communications breakdown. And now we get a little bigger fire, and now Tate City shows up. And Tate has the same problem as Harris and Motorola. Everybody's proprietary, and we couldn't talk. Now we start getting to some critical situations. Three alarm fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, where people are always coming together and trying to do an important job and save lives at the same time. And we have this communication breakdown each time. It was a big problem. Something had to be done. And what was done is they decided the government came together and the industry came together and asked the TIA to come up with a new radio standard. When the TIA did that, they opened a new project. It was project number 25, and thus P25 was born. So what is P25? Simply put, P25 is a communication share standard shared across all the manufacturers. If it's a P25 radio, it uses this standard in every one of its radios so that when one radio wants to talk to another, one P25 radio can talk to another P25 radio. And it doesn't matter who the manufacturer is. By adhering to the standard, now critical interoperability previously missing can be established. Now on that same three alarm fire, Motorola P25 radios can talk to Harris P25 radios, can talk to Tate P25 radios, and we can now start to work cooperatively. This was very important 
especially when you're starting to get into larger disasters. Today, the P25 standard is required for any radio that's purchased with government money. Whether your town is buying a P25 radio with a grant or if it's a government agency, P25 is now the standard. And it's done that for that reason, is the interoperability and to make sure that when things go wrong, we have a radio system that can talk and can work with other systems. Pretty simple idea. So when P25 was put together, we end up with two different modes. Now this is land mobile radio. This is pretty true across a lot of land mobile radios. P25 breaks the modes into two. One is known as conventional mode and one is known as trunked mode. Now we are going to focus on conventional. Trunked mode are large radio systems. These are usually your 800 megahertz systems. They are large systems. They encompass 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 radios. They are not something that we are going to be programming as novices on our P25 and setting up a TDFM radio. What's gonna happen on a trunked radio system is the system administrator is going to come and program that radio for us. That is so that they have control of that radio and they can understand and know exactly when it can, where it can go, what it can do on their system. That's important when you're talking systems of 10,000 radios. On the conventional side, it's a little different. Those channels we can program. And when we do that, we end up with a couple of different, first, a couple different options. First, the question we're gonna answer, are we making, are we building analog channels or digital channels? The two are different and it has to do with signal type. Analog channels are the prominent channel. It's the prominent technology. Today, 85% of the channels that you're going to program into a radio are analog channels. It's simple, old, reliable technology. The new technology is digital. Digital technology works as just as well, but it has its own flavor and own way of doing things. So we're gonna start with that first conventional type channel. We're gonna take a look at what those two things and what we're actually setting up and what is the technology behind it. So let's take a look now at these two guys, okay? Analog, like I said, is most common. 85% or so of the LMR radio signals are analog. What does that mean? Analog means it's the type of wave signal that we're using. Analog is kind of like an ocean wave. It's this long, nice flowy wave that goes out and out from the antenna. And it goes on and on and on until it slowly loses power and it continues to go on until all power is gone. What that results in is the farther we get from the station, the weaker the signal, the weaker the signal, the more static that we'll build. And we'll continue to get weaker and weaker and weaker until we have nothing but static on that channel. Now, everybody's probably experienced this with their car stereo. You put on your favorite channel, you start driving on a road trip, you're 50 miles away, it starts to get a little weaker, starts to be a little more quiet, gets a little more broken. 100 miles away, 150 miles away, somewhere along the line, you're gonna end up with nothing but static. It, the channel doesn't end, it just slowly fades into non-existence. Okay, we've seen this on TVs. If you're older and are around for analog TVs, you're used to what this picture looks like. That was your TV screen when the signal was too far away or you were trying to pick up a channel that was farther out than your antenna can handle. You would get the static. And sometimes you could see the images in the static, sometimes it was half static, whatnot. That's what we're dealing with. The farther away, the more static you get until it's completely unusable. Now we went to digital TVs and digital signals. Digital is a little different. Digital can carry different data. It can also operate a little bit differently. Digital consists of a block style wave and in the digital world, you're either 100% usable or you're not usable. It's kind of a hard stop where this wave would go on and on and on analog. Digital is gonna be 100% until it just stops. And when it stops, we're gonna end up with no signal at all. Most of you have probably seen your TV look something like this, where it's pixelated and frozen and doesn't work. 
and then it starts coming back or you move your antenna and it comes back and so forth. This is a pretty common scenario. In the radio, on your radio, it's going to work 100% and then it's going to stop working altogether. Now, digital has its advantages. It can carry more data. Your digital stereo or car stereo gives you all kinds of information, who the artist was, what song's playing, and so forth, where analog wasn't doing that. This carries more data and can do more things, but it does have that hard stop limitation. So a channel that worked perfectly one minute in a helicopter you've flown five miles and all of a sudden now it's not working at all. That is a possibility. Just know that when you're setting these things up, analog is the most common and digital is the least common. But we'll see the day where that's going to switch. Again, if we are setting up a channel and it was meant to be digital and we select analog as its mode, the channel's not going to work. You're not going to get, you're never going to break this squelch because it's talking two different languages completely and the radio is looking for the one, not the other. Okay, so P25, interoperability standard. That's a pretty simple concept. When we're programming, we are programming conventional channels. And the first thing that we're gonna need to understand is what is the mode, analog or digital? And this is the difference that we have. Now, TDFM radios are based on some Motorola technology. And when we program Motorola radios, Motorola has its own lingo. Just like aviation and every other industry out there, learning the lingo is important. Motorola has its own lingo. lingo. In Motorola, an analog channel is known as a non-astro channel. A digital channel is known as astro. So we're going to be asked the question, is this a non-astro or an astro channel? And we're going to have to start that question. That's one of the first questions we're going to be asked. It's just a simple ism. A Motorola-ism, if you will, and it's no big deal. It's just asking us that mode. So let's stop right there. We appreciate you watching Radio 101. We're going to stop there. Next time, we're going to pick up with channels, and we're going to talk about simplex and duplex channels and what the difference is and how they operate. So thank you again for joining us, and we will see you next time on Radio 101.